So one of the questions that's often asked about inverses is whether the inverse is unique. It actually is a theorem. And one way you can show that the inverse of a non-singular matrix is unique is simply by assuming that there are two and then showing that they're the same. So if B and C are both inverses of the matrix A, then we're going to prove that B equals C. In other words, that the inverse is actually unique. Well, since we're told that B is an inverse, if we pre-multiply on the left side of A by B, we would get BA equals the identity matrix. And if we use the other inverse C and multiply it on the right while grouping BA together, we would have BAC equals identity times matrix C, which is simply matrix C. But now by the associative property, I can group A and C on the left side of the equation and instead say that B times AC equals C. But wait a second, C was said to be an inverse of A. Well, since that's the case, the A times C is simply the identity. So B times the identity equals C or B equals C. So we have shown that actually these two inverses are the same inverse. So there's only one unique inverse. Quite easily done indeed. Now an interesting other way that students often come up with to establish this fact is they simply multiply on the right side of matrix A. They multiply B on the right, C on the right, and they say AB equals the identity, AC equals the identity. Hey, let's subtract. AB minus AC would be some zero matrix size n by n. And of course they know by the property of matrix arithmetic that's simply a distributive uh, example. So that's equivalent to A times B minus C equals the zero matrix. Now here students are um, understandably cautious because they know that just because two matrices multiply to give you the zero matrix does not mean or guarantee that either or both of them have to be the zero matrix. However, in this particular case, we can establish that B minus C has to be the zero matrix. Here's how. We were told that A is an invertible matrix, so we know it can't be the zero matrix. We were also told that we have some inverses of A, namely B and C. Let's pick one of them. Let's say we use matrix B and multiply both sides of this equation on the left by matrix B. Well, certainly B times A is the identity. B times the zero matrix on the right is just the zero matrix. So now we've established that B minus C matrix equals the zero matrix, and once again, B equals C. So any way you slice or dice it, if B and C are both inverses of matrix A, well, B and C are actually the same. And that's another way of saying that the inverse of a non-singular matrix is unique. Hope you enjoyed this video.